value trades, Forex CFDs and commodities. Thanks to everybody who um, joined us live for this, um, for this, this webinar. Uh, with myself, Malte Kaup, and, and, and Paul, Paul Wallace. Um, or if you look at this webinar um, as, a, as a video, I think uh, it's definitely worth watching. We have some, some cracking content prepared for you guys. Um, and um, we will leave you with some, um, a, a bit of a Q&A uh, between Paul and myself, and we will leave you with some very explicit ideas on how to um, improve your trading uh, discipline by applying some uh, setups that that um, Paul kind of has come up with and has shared recently with a trading community in London that, that has gone down like a storm. Um, just before we go into that, um, let me just uh, set the scene a little bit by um, walking you through the disclaimer. Obviously, um, we're talking about CFD trading here. That means that uh, CFDs and FX are uh, leveraged products that carry a high level of risk to your capital. So it's possible to lose uh, more than your initial deposit and you may be required to make further payments. These products may not be suitable for all clients, so please ensure you fully understand the risks involved. So really the bottom line here is that this is an educational webinar and uh, you and yourself are responsible for your uh, trading um, decisions and nothing that Paul or I discussed should be in, as a explicit um, trading advice. And I think it's particularly important because we will be, especially Paul will be quite explicit when it comes to the setup. The point, but the point of the setups is not to talk about um, uh, or talk, talk you, uh, tell you how to trade. It's to learn. It's about learning. It's about learning discipline. All right. So with that, with that said, and then when let's get into uh, a bit of a Q Q and A mode and uh, look at kind of what Paul also has prepared for us today. Let me first check. Paul, are you here? How are you doing? I am. I am. I can hear you loud and clear, Multi. Hello, everybody. Fantastic. Technology is, is with us. And if you have any questions you want to ask live, please use the chat functionality. Uh, if, if not, surely you can reach out to your um, account representative at Velotrade. So we'll be very happy to help you with that. Um, brilliant, Paul. Great, great to have you here. And thanks for preparing uh, tonight's uh, slides and uh, when we kind of prepared this webinar, we discussed uh, the, the need for support and resistance and uh, want to, as I said, leave you with some very specific types uh, for, a tr for a trading trading method. But just, Paul, looking back at 2016, what do you think? What, what, what a year has it been, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah, I think it's... Um... I think that's actually a bit of an understatement. Multi, <laughs> I think it was a, it was um, it was kind of a, a completely historic year, wasn't it? Tumultuous, historic. You could um, you could take a, a whole host of uh, uh, large adjectives to to describe what a kind of year that was, both uh, politically and and also within the markets. Absolutely, and I suppose if anybody would have said at the beginning of the year that we would have a, a president-elect uh, whose name is Donald Trump, um, we would have given uh, the, the decision by the British people to uh, for Britain to leave the European market and so forth. I think nobody really had that on on their on their cards, and I suppose what uh, what many traders um, find find remarkable and quite interesting is also um, there was a certain expectation that if these outlier scenarios happen um, uh, there was an expectation that markets would would crumble right and never never recover and I, I read a piece actually today um, in the Financial Times that there was a, a particular hedge fund in in Mayfair in London here who was right by kind of betting uh, pro Brexit uh, so they supported the hypothesis that we would get a Brexit scenario, but we were wrong in their trading hypothesis. They lost 50% of their invested capital because they indeed anticipated an ultra bearish scenario on equities, which uh, which 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 didn't emerge. Um, I don't know how how have you how have you how have you um, navigated through these uncertain waters? Have there anything any any remarks? Kind of what stood out for you? What has worked for you? What you found challenging, Paul? Yeah, it's a, that's a that's a great. Um, I I hadn't seen that uh, piece, but that um, that is a, a fine insight, Malta, into the fact that you know you you can call the market direction, but um, but still um, but still struggle with your actual trades uh, just because of the nature of what the, what the market may do. So um, uh, for me, I, I am um, 
a lot of this is all to do with uh, um, risk to reward, right? And we, uh, it's about finding yourself on the right end of that spectrum. So with regards to the, the news announcements, the major news announcements we had last year, um, my view was, which has always been the same really, is that I, I personally don't carry uh, relevant positions into big major news announcements like that. Uh, and the reason being that, because um, exactly like you've just described there, you know, you might actually pick the right um, the right result, but uh, how the market reacts can be completely different than than how you uh, how you thought it would be, be beforehand. Um, and, you know, and it's just that over the years, I've just you know, I've just found that that's what works for me. I you know, I much prefer to 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 be flat going into big news announcements and then basically trade what the market gives me afterwards trade what I uh, trade what I see because I, I, I openly admit uh, um, you know I thought that um, after uh, you know after a Trump victory I thought the initial reaction would be uh, you know sort of dollar weakness and uh, uh, weakness in the US indices uh, and so uh, you know if I had uh, if I'd had a positions backing you going into the uh, into the announcement, then I, you know, I'd be, I'd be like that, uh, like that hedge fund sitting on uh, considerable losses. So, it's, um, you know, I, I personally will have, a, you know, I'll, I'll do scenario analysis. I'll have a view, but then I will actually wait to see, you know, uh, I'll wait to see how the market reacts and and trade that reaction. I would want to trade what I see rather than trade what I think. Oh, some 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 great insight here, and. Um... So, sounds to me, I think a great insight, one piece I've taken away from, from you, what you said, is you didn't take uh, a risk into the weekend. I suppose also moving forward, um, in looking into 2017, I think that is, a, that is really powerful advice because we will still be exposed uh, to a lot of um, news risk. And um, I've, I've just also seen some analysis that um, now Mr. Trump is able to move the markets with a tweet um, so what happened, yeah. I think one example was when he uh, was talking directly to the automotive industry about the fact that he wants to either have them invest within the United States of America or if they don't do and we want to sell cars into, uh, into the US, they can expect a lot of tariffs and, and taxes uh, to be paid um, that had an immediate reaction, reaction on um, uh, implications on, on the, the Mexican peso who lost a lot of value and uh, some secondary implication on even the Canadian dollar because uh, kind of people kind of extrapolated that obviously also to the, the other neighboring country uh, to, 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 to the US. So it's quite impressive to see that um, somebody now can move the markets with 140 characters and he can surely do that on, on, a, on a weekend. <laughs> and if you're stuck in a position, um, uh, possibly a large position that you accumulated over, over a while, then you open up yourself to a lot of event risk that you may be uh, not even considering in your trading strategy that takes you far out of your comfort zone and can lead to rapid losses in your account. And it's it's almost, I don't know if you have a different view, but I suppose it would be almost impossible to trade that as an opportunity, right? To to expect that something like a tweet from Trump will happen over the weekend and, and hence we go US dollar long. I think that would be a very a very foolish trading strategy. So this one just for me seemed to have a lot of downside but not a lot of upside. Yeah, that's and that's right. And, and I do know people who are effectively uh, trading off Trump's tweets, which is a rather um, um, <clears throat> Yeah, it's a it's a that's a it's a rather a gamey way to go about uh, a trading plan. But at the moment, because uh, as when he comes out and says something, there is an immediate reaction. So yet the the uh, the scenarios you talked about there, um, you know, uh, and in fact, you know, them uh, um, had a, for example, like an immediate impact on the price of uh, Toyota. Uh, I know he's also uh, had a knock on uh, the price of uh, defense companies like Boeing and Lockheed Martin. So it, it, it as you say, it is. Amazing that you know, like as you say, 140 characters tweet from him can can move markets, um, which is, um, is, uh, is 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 quite is quite shocking, really, in in uh, in many ways. And uh, I, I think that um, to talk about event risk for this year, you know, last year we had a lot of event risk politically. And my, my own view for this year is that we're going to have uh, equal uh, equal amounts of event risk, uh, predominantly on uh, on the European front. So I think we've got. Um, we're we're going to have a uh, another Italian election at some point. I think this year, 
There's also, I think, the uh, the Netherlands, also uh, um, uh, France, uh, and also Germany as well. So there's going to be a lot of event risk, and, and you know, any uh, let's say any neg uh, negative events that happen over the um, over the weekend are you know are likely to to have a, an impact upon those relevant um, currencies and indices that uh, to, to those particular nations. Very good, and I suppose I can add to that uh, the ongoing uncertainty about what. Brexit actually means. I think we just uh, a couple of days ago we had an interview from Theresa May and that pointed more against in the direction of a hard Brexit and immediately the pound got quite nervous and uh, we saw we saw a, a drop in the pound. Uh, don't confuse yeah. these things with like the end of a pound. I think this is how markets react and traders will have an opinion uh, uh, um, and we, they will try to make money off that opinion, right? So that can shift in the other, the pendulum can shift in the other direction in a in a heartbeat but it was quite interesting to see that uh, the, that we, we still have a lot of news risk and event risk in the market and sometimes it's really hard to gauge where this, where this news risk come from comes from so as one thing we should probably continue uh, to do we should continue to uh, look at the calendar and be aware of uh, the NFP Fridays and the FOMC meeting notes and uh, the Mario Draghi speeches um, and, and just know that they have massive uh, implications on the market and they always have a potential to move the market very, very strongly. But now I think we, we just added a whole um, raft of other uh, potential news challenge, ch channels and events to um, our agenda for 2017, which we have to take into account. And I think as we are both a kind of uh, normal human beings at the end of the day. I think it will be hard to track and monitor everything and then kind of derive a correct analysis in a way that we know how the markets will react. Uh, that, that's probably hard. So what, what would be a reaction? I suppose less less is more would be would be one reaction to this increased complexity for 2017. Or what, what do you think maybe with a view on kind of moving us a bit more in direction of support and resistance? Exactly, yeah, exactly. I think um, when um, when the, the world becomes a very volatile and very complex, it's um, it's it's very easy to get overwhelmed by all the uh, the amount of data that um, that is flooding towards us. And, and actually, what happens is then you know what can help us is, as you say, a little bit of a less is more philosophy and, and sort of stripping away almost what we see on charts uh, and just returning to some uh, very basic, simple, but very tried and tested um, ideas. And, and one of them is is effectively you know the the, the almost uh, you know, it's the the sort of almost the simplest of them all in terms of understanding your know, basic introduction to to support and resistance, and uh, being able to understand that, and being able to identify, it and then being able to look at how to utilize that to to build trading plans is, is almost like uh, one of the you know the, the the fundamental elements of of a of a trader's journey. And um, I think there will be plenty of opportunities this year hmm. to use the the the, the simple idea. Ideas that we're talking about here to uh, to, to help a, a trader evolve and improve their uh, their trading capabilities. Brilliant! Thank you very much. I think that really nicely sets the scene for the next uh, 40, 45 minutes or so. So everybody watching this as as a recording, as a video, is really in for for a treat. Uh, or joining us live here today. So we'll talk about support and resistance in a bit more more detail. Um, uh, and uh, and then we will land on, ultimately we land on two very specific setups with a view to think more about trading discipline. So I've seen Paul just recently present this content at a, um, at a quite prestigious trading event, um, a trading fair here in London and that really resonated very strongly with the people here. So um, you, you're definitely in, in for a treat. So I suggest Paul, what I'll do is I'll, I will move the slides forward and kind of um, let you probably let you mostly navigate us <clears throat> through the content and uh, kind of ask some, some questions as probably a participant uh, would, would ask a question or if I have an observation, just, just add it. Absolutely. Um, yeah, thanks, Balti. Well, you know what I wanted to start with was uh, very simple, just a very simple understanding of support resistance and how, how I uh, perceive it. Um, then talk about, you know, quickly, you know, really what what everything boils down towards in terms of trading methods and then finish up with a, a couple of very simple setups that the uh, 
the viewers could take away and start to utilize tomorrow. That's that's what we want to do to be able to uh, to, to help traders, you know, um, develop their skill set straight straight away. So, support and resistance, you know, d desperately simple uh, um, ideas, but I, I quite often see it done wrong. And uh, you know, I, I'm going to put up a, just one or two slides here. Not not a great deal, but just because they you know that there's there's a huge amount of a, uh, um, a content available to talk about that. But what I want to do is just to ensure that we have a level playing field as we as we move forward. So, you know, realistically, you know, if you are completely completely new to trading, you know, when, when we're talking about support levels, um, you know, I'd like you to think of that as a, as almost like you know the the floor that underpins a uh, uh, underpins a particular instrument's movements. And when you hear talk, people talk about resistance, it will uh, think of that as a as a ceiling above. The, uh, the movement of price uh, and what happens is that we start to see that uh, you know as you start to understand and look at charge you start to realize that uh, uh, price moves a great deal between these floors and ceilings uh, and once you're able to start to identify them then they become uh, particular areas of interest for us as, as traders uh, even in uh, the modern day where we have uh, you know a, a selection of let's say uh, automated uh, trading, uh, whether in HFTs or the sort of uh, systematic uh, buy and sell programs that operate by institutions, that the reality is that uh, support and resistance levels, you know, are, are uh, they uh, they are still immensely important because uh, markets remember markets are made up of humans, you know, and, and markets remember particular key levels, and uh, we'll have a little maybe chat about them and look at. A, one or two that we saw last uh, last year that were of, uh, of particular relevance. So, if uh, if you'd be kind enough to uh, move the slide on, uh, Multi, that would um, that would help. And when uh, when we talk about support resistance, and there'll be a couple of slides just uh, coming up with uh, let's say a more graphic visual di uh, display of, of what we talk about it. Um, what we're able to do is to actually break it down into sort of two further levels, right? In terms of how it, they uh, support resistance manifests itself on our charts. The first one you'll hear me talk sometimes talk about is static levels of support resistance, as the name implies. You know they they, they don't move much, and, and there we're looking at horizontal levels of support and resistance on our on our charts, and also such things as a big round numbers, psychological numbers. You know human beings, human beings remember numbers. So if you you know if you look in the um, the press over the last month or two, okay, every man and his dog has been talking about the Dow hitting uh, 20,000 points because it's a, it's a big round psychological number. That becomes, in this particular case, a static level of resistance because it's it's a ceiling above the existing price. What we also have is uh, dynamic levels of support resistance, and once again, as the name implies, they're dynamic because they move. The markets are fluid; things move, and so. In terms of support and resistance, we'll very often we'll see uh, moving averages used as dynamic level support and resistance, and that could be particular areas where price uh, is, um, is is becomes of interest to myself. That's just like there for the moment, uh, and also trends and trend lines. Now, of course, tr some people may say trends and uh, trend lines might be a little bit static, but it, invariably what's happening is they are. Uh, they are coming about as as price moves, okay, and as, as price plays itself out on the charts, and it's not unusual for trend lines to move slightly as they are uh, as as more data comes into the market and they are updated. But the important thing really to understand about that support resistance is that you know what it gives us is this opportunity for where to time our entry into our trades, or perhaps where we to uh, place our uh, stop loss, and, and can actually give you a a, a potential uh, profit target. As we've uh, um, mentioned just briefly, price very often will move between those levels of uh, of support and resistance. Okay, so we go. We go into the next slide. So uh, here we go. It's uh, just a very simple, very simple chart here because uh, you know what you'll see is you know we talked about Dow at twenty thousand, but actually you know it, it very often it uh, uh, price can be seen as uh, as as a zone, all right? And the, you know the support and resistance. Um, levels can be seen as, as zones that a price will sort of you know move towards, uh, and it's that interaction once it's in that zone that starts to become interested. And you know, just on a very quick visual display there, you can see how price is moving between um, those le those zones of support and resistance. And by being able to identify them, you start to to have a a little bit of a heads up on on where price may move to, uh, or where there may be an opportunity for you to uh, uh, employ a, a particular trading method. I think that's quite quite interesting. If I if I may just ask you a question, when I see this um, 
this bigger arrow that you've drawn in this uh, kind of red box on the side on a, on a kind of a right shoulder so the price is kind of moving through that resistance zone and comes back to um, comes back to a retest then before to really tank uh, towards the support zone do you, do you have any 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 preference are you kind of working working uh, waiting for more confirmation or you just um, are, are you are you would you try to engage kind of on a first touch or uh, kind of what's yeah what's what's your what's your take on that more confirmation or would you just be aggressive and and enter at the first possible opportunity um, certainly there um, the, the, there are uh, sort of two ways you can look at this you, you can as you say just be very aggressive and, and almost you know trade the level and you will find many people will do that and I think on on a let's say a very very short time frame that that could be a uh, that could be a, a, a viable way to, to operate um, personally personally uh, you know I know my risk profile and personally especially on the sort of let's say the longer time frames uh, I like to see how uh, price reacts once it gets to that particular zone I, you know I like to to see you know how, how it reacts and and will it give me a particular confirmation signal that will give me the idea to to, to perhaps take a trade at that level uh, and you know it's you know we sort of talk about you know we you know you and I multi can can teach people you know pretty much everything under the sun when it comes to to trading and markets but the one thing we you know we can't teach is is an individual's risk profile that has to uh, that has to come from the from the individual themselves and you know some people are more aggressive some people are more uh, risk averse and that's the uh, that's the uh, that's the way we uh, particularly look at and it's it's about understanding your own particular risk profile in that case mm -hmm. so for me i like to see confirmation and, and then i'll make a decision to move fantastic thanks for that i think that's that's really cracking insight and if you are new to this and you struggle um kind of to to understand that don't don't worry because um just probably go for a more structured approach when you start and the more you gain experience you you will understand what it actually means to kind of see look at price action and to get more confirmation I think in the beginning don't try to uh, uh, get, get everything on board try to keep it as, as simple as possible that will enable you to get to that next uh, to that next level so I moved us forward one slide yeah so um, th this is just another sort of you know a little bit of a, a quick graphical representation for those who are completely new to trading to realize, understand that, you know, you can have, uh, you know, major and minor levels of support and resistance. And uh, it's a, uh, it, it's something that you'll, something that you'll see and experience, you know, uh, you know, as you, as you trade. Uh, and, you know, the, the thing we've put there is that, you know, that, that chart, you know, there's no real indication of time scale on that. But, it doesn't really matter whether it's a, a one-minute chart or a one-month chart. It's about you know being able to identify the uh, significant levels of support and resistance. That they can be very very useful pieces of information for us that will help us build our trade plans. Uh, what I have here is it's a little bit scruffy, but you know that's just scruffy because you know over years this is a chart of the uh, the gold on on the daily. And uh, just showing about, and you can probably see sort of the uh, the sort of orange blocks and the uh, the blue circles about. You know, we start to identify that particular levels become important to us. You know, and you can see that that goes back over you know over many years, all right. And, and as you uh, as you trade, and the longer you trade, you're able to develop and identify those uh, those particular levels or particular trend lines or particular zones that become of interest to us. And as I said, you know, once price gets to those levels, that's when I start to get interest to see how price responds, and that will start to uh, I, I, that will start to uh, help me generate a, a trade plan to work with those um, work with that particular price action. So uh, that very quick uh, talk about support resistance is that you know support resistance can be defined in many ways, um, you know. As much as we may like to see it, the markets and uh, you know are random. But they generally they, they generally are. They you know the markets are made up of humans, and humans remember particular levels, and it's those particular levels that become of interest towards us as traders. Uh, and horizontal support and resistance, which is very simple to to draw onto your charts, works works very well. It works as well for you know today as it did for Jesse Livermore and etc. You know 100 years or so ago. So uh, you know the uh, you know it's simple and it works. What it can also do is it can also help us define you know, the sort of price structure, the, the, the trend itself with 
higher highs, higher lows, or lower lows, lower highs. But one of the things that um, is important to realize is that you know support can become resistance, and resistance becomes support. And, and being able to identify and understand that can, can really help us in our own particular trading. So um, after a little brief, uh, the brief recap of support and resistance, uh, what I actually want to move on to is to talking about, well, OK, how do I actually utilize that information to start to to help me with my trading. So um, if you go onto the internet, you know, you can you can, you know, Google for trading and investing methods and you know you'll you'll find thousands on there, okay, from the from the free to the very expensive. But the realistic thing is that it, they actually all boil down to one of two styles generally. And uh, you know, either when you're looking to trade, if you could just uh, click the slide multi, what we're uh, what we're looking at is you are uh, you're actually going to be trading either a break of a line of support resistance or a bounce off a line of support resistance and it really is quite as simple as that you you know you'll find you know traders we, we do make it quite a, we we make it quite um, we make it quite challenging quite difficult quite full on for ourselves but actually if you boil it all down that's what most trading methods or trading strategies are you know, are about either a break of a line of support resistance or a bounce off a line of support resistance and it, sometimes it helps us to, to just to realize and to remember that it is as simple as that. So I've got a little example of you know trading a break of a level of support resistance. Let's see if the uh, if the build has uh, has worked on these slides. If you could just uh, click on a couple of multi, that would uh, help us. But um, what I have there is just as identifying you know a level of uh, of resistance and being able to draw that on you know. And uh, we can also, you know, identify probably the levels of support on there as well. If you just, uh, there we go. Okay. And you know, and once we're able to identify those levels of resistance support, we're able to trade a break of that level of support resistance. And in, in that particular case, it was a break south, and you can see that you know how price, how price dropped. So very simple. You know, you're just trading a break of a level. Simple as that. Whereas alternatively, you could be looking at trading a bounce off. A level of support or resistance. This is the daily chart on the euro, and you can see that you know the, the trend is quite clear, but we can also see that you know price bounced off both horizontal static levels that we've drawn on there, uh, and also bounced off the dynamic uh, uh, resistance levels in terms of the moving average and the red moving average being just a you know, simple 50 period moving average. So. What we're able to do is to see how you know price, you know, as I said, will either break a level of support resistance or it will bounce off a level of support resistance. And once we know and understand that, we can utilize that to help us, you know, build some simple trade plans. And Paul, is that specific to any time frame, or does it not matter? Um, does it, does that idea work on all time frames? It, it works on all time frames. What you'll find is that the longer the time frame, the more validity it has. But you know, the, all of the stuff that uh, we talk about here is, you know, is is as is as uh, valid on a one minute chart as it is on a weekly chart. Oh, just a couple of little extras there you can see. So. Um, here's a very simple example on the. Uh, this is actually the Kiwi Yen. This is the weekly chart, and this is you know where we can see price bouncing off levels of support resistance, and it actually formed a range. And, and the, the interesting thing is that the, this range happened over about four years, right? So you know, as, as Multi just asked, you know, how, you know, how long can it go for? Well, it could be on a minute chart, but you know, this could also, you know, as this case is, this is a is a weekly chart and actually that range that they kept bouncing off those levels of support and resistance you know happened for about four years before price eventually broke out of the range it broke the level and then you can see that it, uh, it carried on all the way up so uh, it's uh, you know it, it, it's valid across all time frames and all instruments so so as I said you know you're either trading a break of a level or a bounce off it and they both have their pros and cons. Some people prefer breakouts. Some people prefer bounces. Uh, personally, my own personal view is that I prefer to trade bounces uh, as part of a, a pullback within a uh, within a sort of dominant trend. And the reason being is that it gives me an opportunity to enter at a better price. Uh, and also, if I am wrong, I, I know I'm wrong far sooner, and so I can get out and and uh, and sort of mitigate my uh, risk as quickly as possible. But then you know there will be other people who who love to trade breakouts. So it's you know 
you know, as I said right at the start, but understanding your own risk profile, understanding you know which uh, particular style sort of resonates with your own uh, with your own particular trading personality. So um, what we talked about is you know, you know, talking about in terms of trading support resistance. What I thought to do is I I sort of evolved the idea into uh, utilizing those uh, two ideas we've talked about and also using it to help you develop your own trading discipline, something which is very important for uh, for all traders. Now, it, what we've done is we've looked at, well, how could we uh, utilize support and resistance in terms of, let's say, just simple intraday setups for a, for a beginner trader that could utilize the uh, the ideas we've just discussed and, and be something that you could take away and start to trade on tomorrow. So this is this is what we call the discipline breakout. And uh, if we just click on a slide, uh, Malta, we'll be able to talk about it. So. It's, a, it's not unusual, especially within FX markets and intraday trading of FX markets, that uh, people look to trade early morning breakouts during the, uh, the early morning of the European sessions. There's, there's lots of different variations on that, you know, and you can find all manner of uh, styles to do that. But actually, most of it is, is a numbers game in terms of you know, you're looking at uh, having a, uh, the, your trading method play out for you over a larger sample of trades. And what it actually does is it requires the discipline to place the same trade every every day, regardless of the uh, regardless of the results of the previous trades. So uh, just uh, for those of you who need, if you want a definition of discipline, there's a couple of I think a couple of bullets I, I put in there. Multi, if you'd be a couple more bullets, is that you know definition of discipline is either training to act in accord with the rules. Oh, it's, uh, oh, there is these uh, overshot there. Target activity, exercise, or a regime that develops or improves a skill or a set or system of rules and regulations, and that's what this is all about, right? Training you to act in accordance with your uh, rules that allows you to develop uh, a skill set, uh, and you know by following a particular set of system of rules and regulations that that uh, that uh, generate a trading uh, trade.